Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Book HQ. So today I'm going to be talking about a book series which is beloved to many and which spawned a TV series which had a cult following of which I was a part of and that is Roswell High by Melinda Metz. This series meant so much to me when I was growing up. Like how my week was going depended on how things were going between the protagonists in Roswell. I discovered that the series is actually based on a book series last year and at the time I was working and my commute was like two hours to work and two hours back. So I had bags of time to to read the series and I just burned through the book series on my commutes and I loved it. It just reminded me of the series again and then I went and rewatched the TV series and it was still as wonderful as it was when I watched it all those years ago in the 90s. I'm going to start with the first book in the series and uh, kind of have several episodes on each of the books as we go along. So the first book is The Outsider and it kind of sets up all the different characters and I really like that about the way Melinda Metz writes is that like we get to see events um, from all the different points of view of the characters. So we see it from Max's perspective, we see it from Liz's perspective, from Maria's, from Michael's, from Isabel's, from Alex, and that was really cool. There were some differences in the book um, to the TV series, such as the fact that like in the book, Liz is Liz Ortega, so she's like Latin American, and she has an older sister who had a drug problem who died, and so her parents are super are, like overprotective of her. And like in the TV series, she's Liz Parker and she doesn't have any siblings, but her parents are still overprotective and like we don't really understand why and you know when you read the book, then you understand why. Then Max in the book, like I think the difference really is his description. So Max in the TV series was played by Jason Bear, very handsome, dark brooding. It was really the age for handsome, dark brooding people when I think about like Angel and uh, Dawson's Creek, etc. Jason Bear was definitely one of those, And but like, in the book, Max is blonde and blue-eyed. So it's like really uh, difficult for me. I guess I'm one of those people who like, I need descriptions of people to be the same in both book and movie because like, I've just kind of gotten used to somebody being a certain way. And I kind of feel like the chemistry between Max and Liz, I mean, I could be wrong, but to me, sometimes I, I felt like, oh, it was, they were both like dark haired and dark eyed. And so it's just, like weird to think about as I'm reading the book. I mean, she describes like his blonde hair and like he's the piercing blue eyes. I'm like, who are we talking about? Isabel is much the same as she is in the, in the TV series. Michael's character is much the same as well. However, in the book, there's a lot more information about his background, a lot more character development there. Um, we see a lot more about his familial situation and like he's living in a home with like several other siblings and sometimes he has to babysit and like we get to really see a lot more about that side of him, which in the TV series we just see like he's a foster kid and he lives with this douchebag guy who only keeps him for the paychecks. And so we don't really see like a lot more of his character development. Alex, Alex is like a redhead in the book and he has several siblings, older brothers, and he comes from this family of army people. So his dad's in the army, his brother's in the army, his granddad's in the army, and there's a lot of pressure on him from his dad to sort of start an army group at school to better his chances of getting into the army when he leaves high school and so we see a lot of that struggle with him of how he's picked on by his brothers at home and how he doesn't really want to go down the same career path but he's got this pressure from his dad and I really thought that was really interesting to get to know him and he has this thing also in the book where he like writes these lists so like every other day he's got, he's got like on his I don't remember what web platform he was using at the time it's dated obviously now but um, he has this online presence and he lists uh, this week's 10 best this or 10 best that or 10 worst this or 10 worst that. And it's really interesting as he kind of um, goes through the process brainstorming with Maria and Liz. And I thought it was really cool that he has that little thing of his. Another thing which I thought was interesting, which they did have kind of one episode like that in the TV series, is that Max oftentimes will like imagine himself in like a 70s TV series, you know, where there's like a prim and proper like couple and they live in this little house and the wife has the big hair that kind of curls up at the bottom and he imagines that like he has this prim and proper life but then at night he he goes into like his little spaceship and like flies it around like a double life but like in a 70s TV series, comedy sitcom, which is really strange. And there is that one episode in the TV series where you do get to see, it starts off like that, like they're in the 70s, they got clothes, they've got like a little round um, 
saucer shaped spaceship with the glass cover that he goes into and like weird things are kind of normalized which is kind of which, which what makes it funny and I thought it was really interesting that he kind of you know when he wants to like daydream that's what he daydreams about the other interesting thing also is that like Isabel walks in people's dreams we know that from the TV series and she does it in the book series as well but what was interesting was that the way in which she does it so like in the book it's described as like each person has like an aura and the aura is like a ball which has a very unique color like colors that we don't know and don't exist in like the known vocabulary of colors and so she, they all also have their own melody and she can like draw the balls to her of a specific person if she matches the pitch of the the melody of the ball and then she can go inside and and i thought that that was super interesting and actually at the end of the book they kind of form sort of like i want to say like a fellowship or like a pack but i can't find i don't know what the terminology is when we're talking about aliens so they form a bond between like the three aliens and then um, Liz, Maria, and Alex, um, where they they end up in the the cave and she you know brings out everybody's aura balls and everybody connects and there's like this like protectiveness of each other and this love of each other and going forward we are gonna have each other's backs which I thought works well for the book. I don't want to give too much away. Also interesting to note is that um, Max ends up working at the alien museum place and his boss is actually an alien, which in the TV series isn't like that because in the TV series, his boss is somebody who has been abducted by aliens. In actual fact, he isn't really abducted. He's just kind of body snatched and used as a puppet and then loses time. Um, but in the book series, in the first book, they're looking for this other person who was uh, with them and who was meant to protect them. And it turns out that it's Max's boss. The rest, you will have to find out for yourself because you need to read the book. When I found out about the TV series, I got sucked into a crazy Roswell mania hole on the internet, as one does. And I found something really interesting there. And it is Baron and Toluca. So, those of you who are Russell junkies, you can already hear it. Like, that sounds familiar. Like, Garen and DeLuca. And that is because Myandra Delfino and uh, Brendan Fair have been working for a couple of years on a project which would kind of be like, I don't want to call it like a spin-off of Roswell, but it would kind of be like what Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is to the world of Harry Potter. So it's kind of like a second life for us all. It's going to be a TV series, hopefully, if a network will pick it up, based on two former child actors who used to act in an alien series, who now as adults are forced to work together to solve a paranormal mystery in New Mexico. And so you even see like in the trailer posters, like the backdrop, I mean, I could be wrong, but to me, it looks like the very same sort of rock formation that was very pro prominent in Roswell because it was like the, the formation that was the entrance to the cave where their spaceship landed or where it was housed. So it sounds super interesting. You can totally check them out on Twitter uh, at Baron and Toluca, um, or you can go straight to their website, Baron and Toluca, and like watch the trailer teaser the teaser trailer i'm one of those people who's super excited to see what it's gonna be when it comes out because i'm like i'm here for all things and everything roswell i'm here for all of that if you are like me and you are a roswell junkie do share your comments in the comments below let me know if you watch the series let me know if you've read the books let me know what you think if you liked it if you didn't like it everything i want to know thank you so much for watching this week's episode if you haven't already subscribed please go ahead and subscribe i really appreciate the support and until next time keep reading and keep watching Bye bye